So now everything is in place for us to expose all of these functionalities over HTTP. So I'm going to close all of these tabs and collapse some of these. And in the main package, I'm going to create another package. I'm going to call it resource. Inside of that resource package, I'm going to go ahead and create a new controller class and I'm going to call it server resource. You can call this controller, but typically when it's a REST controller, like a REST API, it's usually called a resource, but that's technically the controller. So at REST controller, and then I want to do a request mapping. So I'm going to do at request mapping, and I want everything in this class to leave under server. So I'm going to do slash server. And the first thing I need to do is to bring in the service implementation because that's what we're going to call every time we need to do something in the back end. So we're going to do server service implementation and we're going to call it server service, for example. And if you remember, if we go inside of the server service, we define this as a final field inside of the class. And then we use the required arcs constructor, which is going to create the constructor and then pass this in inside of the constructor, which will be the dependency injection. So we need to do something similar here. So that's why I define this as a private field. And then we just need to add the annotation in here. So once I do this, you're going to see that this error is going to go away because now we're doing our dependency injection properly. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse this and then go down and I'm going to define a public method and it's going to return a response entity. So we're going to do response entity and that's going to be of type response. So the body is going to be the response that we created in our model. And then I'm going to call this get servers. So that's going to return the list of all the servers that we have in the application. And then inside of this method, I want to return the response entity and then I'm going to call the OK on that class. And you can see that the OK takes a body. And for the body, we're going to pass in our response. So I'm going to call my response. And since we're using the builder pattern, so I can call the builder and then pass in the information that I need to pass. So here I can put that timestamp and then I'm going to pass now and then I'm going to do data. So for the data, we need a map. So that's going to be a map of and then we can pass in the information that we need. So I'm going to say this is going to be the servers. So the key is going to be servers. And then the value inside of that map is going to be all the servers that we're going to retrieve. So I'm going to call the server service that list. And then let's say we want the first 30. So I'm passing in a hard coded value as you can see here. But if you want, you can take this as a parameter, ask the user for that parameter, of course, and then pass it in here. Otherwise, you can pass it in a default. But me, I'm just passing in this hard coded value because I know I'm not going to have, you know, not more than like 10 or 15 servers at a time in the application. And then after I pass the data, I can pass in the message. So I'm going to say the message is going to be servers retrieve, for example, and then I can pass in the status. So I'm going to say status is going to be OK. And then the status code, we need that. So the status code is going to be the same status. And then we're going to call the value on that. So that's going to give us the uh, actual number. So for the OK, it's going to be like a 200. And then lastly, we're going to call build. And then I'm going to press control alt L to see if I can format everything and then see if I can import those. So I'm going to put my mouse on here, go to more action, import and import this. OK, as well, more action and then OK. So all the errors are gone. And then the last thing we have to do is to add an annotation on this so that we can expose it. So I'm going to go up here and then put at this is going to be a get mapping. So I'm going to do get mapping and then I'm going to give this a route. So this is going to go to servers that list. And I have to put a forward slash just like that. So when we start the application and then we go on the base path, so that's going to be localhost 8080 and then forward slash server forward slash list, then it should give us this response that we're creating here. And as soon as we finish with this controller, we're going to go ahead and try it. So let's go ahead and continue with the other methods. 